years I've lived a double life. In the day I do my job, I ride the bus, roll up my sleeves with the hoi polloi. But at night, I live a life of exhilaration. Of missed heartbeats and adrenaline. And, if the truth be known, a life of dubious virtue. I won't deny I've been engaged in violence, even indulged in it. I have assailed adversaries, and not merely in self-defence. I've exhibited disregard for life, limb and property. And savoured every moment. You may not think it to look at me. But I have commanded armies. And conquered worlds. And though in achieving these things, I have set morality aside. I have no regrets. For though I've led a double life, at least I can say... I have lived. I've done all of that, but never taken the bus. Bloody Roar to the New Read. Welcome back to Classic Replay. This one is PlayStation games that really pushed uh, the limits of the hardware. Kicking things off. Um, I wanted to cover Bloody Raw 2. Now, there are a couple of reasons, and uh, let's get into it. Bloody Roar 2 to the new We'll go for the arcade. Now, it's one of the best looking PS1 games, uh, in my personal opinion. And I'm sure that's um, the word out there as well, how people feel about this game. So this game sold around uh, 460,000 copies, and I'm not surprised. It's a, it's a, it's a, a decent game. There's 11 playable characters. <clears throat> I think there's some unlockables as well. And it looks like a Dreamcast uh, get title. It looks that good. Lots of fantastic moves. I mean, this is still stunning. And it's running at uh, a resolution of 640 by 480. And uh, 60 frames per second. Can you believe it? <clears throat> There's like parallel backgrounds as well. And uh, as you can see, there's really fast loading times as well. Graphically, it's just, uh, it's phenomenal, isn't it? I mean, look at it. It does remind me a little bit of um, Virtual Fighter. And that's now, that's not a bad thing. These punch combos, these are very much Virtual Fighter. I mean, <clears throat> it's not as good as Tekken 3. It's not as good as uh, some of the Virtual Fighter games. But it's definitely one to have in your collection. And uh, it pushes the, um, the PlayStation into places, into territory where I didn't even think it could go. So for that basis, it's on the list. Uh, on to the next game. Welcome to the next game. Wipeout 3. Fantastic game studio from back in the day. And although I don't consider this or Wipeout 3 Special Edition the best 
in the PlayStation 1 series, that's um, that probably falls to Wipeout XL or 2097. This is nay bad. Let's get on with it. The loading times are good as well and the graphics are better than what you might expect on a PlayStation 1. I mean, just look at that. Metacritic give this 89%. So that's no bad again. Whoa. And it's the first, I think, in the series to take advantage of the um, analog dual analog controls I've never experienced it but apparently you can have uh, two screen two televisions uh, and up to four players so experiencing that back in the day that would have been something to write home about Now this one um, is the standard version. An additional version came out in Europe called uh, Wipeout Special Edition and that has 22 tracks including uh, tracks from the older games as well. So that's definitely one worth tracking down if you, if you don't have it. So I think this was released in 1999 in Japan and then 2000 in uh, in the West in the in, in Europe, but I mean, this does not look like a PlayStation game. I mean, a PlayStation One game. This looks more like a PlayStation Two or Dreamcast. Absolutely terrific, fabulous game. An absolute PlayStation, as you can see there, in 1999, gave it 95%. Wow. On to the next game. Welcome to the next video. This is Tomb Raider, The Last Revelation. And although it's not the best in the series, I think it's the best looking and the one that pushed the series the most on the PlayStation, um, especially in the graphics department and also in the sound music capability department. It sold over 5 million copies. I personally rate the second Tomb Raider game uh, as my favorite on the uh, PlayStation. But um, yeah, so the menu system is better than ever. Um, it's much easier to navigate Lara around. Um, there's new abilities, new movement abilities. You can combine items to solve uh, puzzles. Lara can zoom in on enemies. So now she can, uh, with her weapons or a sniper, uh, target body parts like limbs um, and the head. Um, she can swing on uh, ropes and vines and navigate around uh, edges as she's shimmy uh, shimmying across, um, you know, uh, a wall. Um, the, the controls are sadly as complex as ever, <laughs> and they do take it a bit of getting used to. But it's, I found this with with any uh, Tomb, Ra Tomb Raider game in the heat of battle when you're not exploring, uh, it can get a bit complex. Uh, this one took around 30 hours to complete um, and that's probably just me uh, taking my time and looking at all the different uh, items you can pick up and secrets and yeah Lara looks better I think in this game than ever 
on uh, the, than on the previous or than the one that came after this. So I think it's the best looking Lara, uh, Lara game on the PS1. Uh, and the other good thing about this game is, can you believe it? You get to, uh, you know, see the pyramids of Egypt and explore them. And that for me, um, and the lighting effects that go off whilst in and around uh, this game, exploring those uh, areas is, is, is really good, even now. Um... So for fans of the Tomb Raider game, this was probably the most refined uh, and the best looking. Um, getting absolutely leathered here. So if you can just jump down. So one of these allows you to crawl. There we go. Fantastic view there. <laughs> so there's 35 levels. Features a new uh, engine. The codes have been re rewritten. About 80% of the codes being rewritten, and uh, it's got smooth skin technology for the time. That was something that the uh, the programmers banged on about. Um, there's better AI in this game, and uh, there's more polygons. So. Yeah, on to the next game. Welcome to Gran Turismo 2. Probably the best PlayStation racing game ever. And the game that probably, again, pushed the uh, PlayStation 1 to its limits. Interesting to know people's thoughts on that. I love to start off uh, with the with the Golf GTI on this game, but uh, you you need about thirty thousand credits to get that. But it's still a great race. I recently tried to complete it again. This game sold over nine point nine point four million copies apologies I've got a bit of a cold oh some heavy uh, traffic there but the car models are, are really detailed for 1999 and the lighting effects uh, really push the boundaries of the 32-bit realism for the time he's got my car there get out of my car or is that the polo the instant replays um, as you probably remember in these are something else if you play this on a PS2, as I'm sure you'll know, uh, it upscales the graphics somewhat. But then there was Bleemcast that came with the Dreamcast console that allowed you to play it in um, uh, on a Dreamcast in Dreamcast uh, high resolution. I think you could even play it through a VGA connection. Oh, he's got the measure on me, this guy. But this is just unbelievable. And the Dreamcast version is magnificent. Cheated a little bit there. Or so I thought. So yeah, there's 650 cars. Can you believe that? And 27 racetracks. And some of those, I think, are rally tracks built in. It was supposed to have featured um, a drag race mode as well, but I'm not sure what happened. 
And last but no least, not least, it, it's a it's a great two-player game as well, albeit split screen. I mean, this is a proper race. The PlayStation is spoilt really for racers. Um, you've got the Toka series. You've got the Destruction Derby. You've got the original Gran Turismo. So you've got the Need for Speed series. <clears throat> and I'm not doing this to say this is the best. I'm saying that this pushed the PlayStation the most. Tahiti Road. On to the next video. So there's an absolute ton of games that uh, I believe push the limits of the Sony PlayStation. And we've seen four there. Metal Gear Solid was another one. Um, this one, Tobal 2. Runs at 60 frames per second, um, scaled to 640 x 480 or 480i, but it's the incredible 3D um, smooth animation that wins through. This is a franchise that needs no introduction. The Resident Evil series on the PlayStation 1 just continued to go from strength to strength. Resident Evil 3 is no exception, and as you can see from the graphics, this is one of the best looking games for the PlayStation. Resident Evil is more polished than ever. You can now dodge zombies, do a 180 degree turn on the bounce, and mix up different types of ammo. There's been lots of driving games, racing games on the PlayStation that uh, I've pushed it near its limits. I'm sure that there's many out there that would argue that Ridge Racer Type 4 does exactly that. I certainly wouldn't argue, but the Driver Series seems to innovate with every new incarnation. And when you consider the limitations of the PlayStation's RAM, this open world environment is proof that Grand Theft Auto in 3D could have been done on the PlayStation. There's some amazing FPS games on the PlayStation. Medal of Honor is one of them, Duke Nukem another. Here we have an absolute classic for the PC, rewritten for the Sony PlayStation. Believe it or not, the Sony PlayStation version was coded in Assembler, with a new redesigned 3D engine. There's lens flare, explosions, particles that render blood, and let's not forget the railgun. Quake 2 runs at 30 frames per second, with a resolution of 512 by 240. It's less flashy than the Naomi Arcade original. Characters are missing their dynamic shadows. Sprite details have been reduced. It runs at a lower resolution than the Arcade original. The sound is slightly ever so, so downgraded. But everything else, including the core gameplay, is arcade perfect. And for my money, a better port than Street Fighter Alpha 3. Capcom versus SNK. Vagrant Story is special because it features fully 3D rendered backgrounds. There's impressive character models throughout. Characters share emotions and even the odd smile. I personally believe this to be a technical masterpiece. It took two years to put this together and it shows. It's one of the most beautiful games of the PlayStation's library. Just look at the size of that. Multi-level stages? Check. Free roaming combat? Check. High resolution 640x480 graphics with full texturing and 60 frames per second? Check. Due to technical difficulties, although this game impresses, it doesn't quite meet the playable heights of Tobal and the infamous Tekken 3. But what we do have 
is a very ambitious title. Okay, so Tekken 3 runs at 60 frames per second. Soul Blade or Soul Edge only runs at 30. But it's still a fantastic and solid outing from Namco. It gave us a glimpse of what was to come for the Sega Dreamcast with Soul Calibur. Not only was it the first weapons-based 3D fighter, the graphics, animation and backgrounds looked amazing. I feel the need, the need for Ace Combat. The environment effects alone put this one on the list. This is impressive, highly impressive stuff for the 32-bit era. The attention to detail is absolutely staggering. And the sheer speed and smooth movement of your fighter seemingly pushes the PlayStation beyond its limits. Although just shy of universal acclaim, Need for Speed 3 competes with Gran Turismo in the technical department. The action is intense and the graphics beautiful. The varying weather conditions really impress me. The track designs are clever, but Need for Speed 3 on the PlayStation has that one vital ingredient. It pushes the PlayStation to its limits in the speed department. But where's that dash view? It must also be stated that Need for Speed 3 features some of the best sound effects ever to grace a console. This brings me on to the last game, but in all seriousness, there's still over a dozen games that I haven't even mentioned that push the PlayStation to extreme limits. So with that in mind, welcome to the last game. You are worthy. What Soul Reaver, Legacy of Kane. What pitiful form is this that I have come to inhabit? Death would be a release. Unfortunately, they force you to watch these cutscenes. <laughs> but it is good. Computer and video video games rated this one 100%. This deserves credit for being a real sequel rather than just an add-on to the previous game. And then it goes on to cite that it's better looking than Tomb Raider and there's much more going on and it's creepy too and it causes panic and will send shivers up your spine or down your spine but this was ahead of its time uh, there's no other way to say that I mean, the worlds in this game are really ambitious, uh, especially the attention to detail. Incredible lighting effects throughout. And I think the, um, the graphics and the character animation are really ahead of their time. The game runs at uh, 512 by 240, which is an odd resolution, but I think they've done that. They did that, sorry, to uh, keep it at um, a steady 30 frames per second. I mean, look at this. You can look around. The movement's fantastic. I wish Tomb Raider uh, moved this fluidly. really captures the atmosphere of this game. Terrifying. This is only the beginning. But yeah, so it's not about the game. 
It's uh, it's about did this game push the PlayStation near its limits, and I believe this did because there's not much else like it uh, on the PlayStation. So, yeah, that was my last game. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you if you did, please subscribe. Please please like. Please even leave a comment and also share uh, if you don't mind. And until next time, bye!